Chapter 12, Source Code The driver took us into a cave and parked the tank again. Okay, Jesse and Eric, what are you doing here? Eric threw up his hands. How does everyone here know our names? The man looked at him quizzically. Well, I know your names because I went to school with you. You don't look like any of our teachers. I wasn't a teacher. I was your classmate. That's when I noticed the man's super duper blue eyes. In my whole life, I'd only met one person with eyes that blue. Mark? Mark Whitman? He smiled a sad smile. That's me. Mark Whitman. I could kind of see it. You know those missing person posters? They age up 20 years to give you an idea of what the person might look like now. Well, that's what Mark looked like except the poster artist had also added lots of muscle and a blaster arm. Eric was having a hard time keeping up. But, but, but why aren't you drowned? Mark cocked his head. Drowned? Everyone thought you drowned in the river. Really? Who goes swimming after a storm? Exactly. No, I was playing full blast and got sucked in. Us too. Yeah, but why are you guys still young? We didn't know what to say. Finally, Eric spoke up. Why are you old? Because I've been in here for 20 years. Eric nearly, nearly fell off the tank. What? You've only been missing for a month. What are you talking about? Eric and I filled Mark in on everything that had happened since he disappeared. The river search, the big photo of him in school, the Mark day. So you guys got a half day off school? Well, yeah, but it wasn't a good half day because everyone was sad. And you're sure I've only been gone a month? We both nodded. That's great news. That means real time moves way slower than video game time. And if we're able to somehow find a way out of here, I can see my parents before they turn into grandparents. It was my turn to speak now. What do you mean somehow find a way out of here? Mark turned the tank back on. I have something to show you. We drove through a wall in the back of the cave. As we zigged and zagged through more levels, Mark explained that every video game has accidental shortcuts through the unfinished walls and scenery. There are even gamers called speedrunners who complete these to find glitches and beat video games in record time. Over the years, Mark had found all of the full blast accidental shortcuts and had made a home underneath the video game world where aliens couldn't reach him. We eventually found ourselves back in the Nevada desert. We drove along the beginning of the level, hugging the forest field boundary. Suddenly, Mark snapped the wheel left, and we were through an invisible hole in the invisible wall. After driving through the never-ending desert for 15 more minutes, we came upon a massive black building. It looked like kind of a warehouse, except it stretched for miles. Mark hopped off the tank. Come on. He grabbed the handle of a huge sliding door, and it creaked open. When we stepped through the door, lights automatically flickered a path in front of us. They illuminated row after row of filing cabinets and TV screens, the big tube kind, and abandoned metal parts. What's this, I asked. The source code, Mark said, as he led us forward. All the files that make this game work are right here. Great, said Eric. Then we should be able to find one that we can use to get out of here, right? Mark shook his head. I searched for a long time to find something I could use to control alt delete my way out of here, but that's not the way it works. After years of digging and experimenting, I came to the conclusion that the only way out is through level 20. What's the problem? Eric asked. I beat level 20. It's not too bad. Mark stopped at the end of a dead end row. This particular section of the warehouse looked like it had been torn apart by someone desperate to find something. The lights here flickered ominously. Files and pictures were taped haphazardly to the wall. There was even red yarn attaching everything together like in those police movies. Mark pointed at the wall. This is the problem. At the top of the wall, above the files and pictures and red yarn, were two words scrawled in spray paint. Two words we had seen before. Hinder Hindenburg Protocol. Underneath those words hung a familiar gas mask. 